वेलकम टू चैप्टर टू कॉल्ड 5G जी लिंक बजट इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर आइडेंटिफाइंग वट एग्जैक्टली इज लिंक बजट हाउ अ साइट ले आउट कैन कैलकुलेट द साइट एरिया टू बी कवर्ड वेदर इट इज अ थ्री सेक्टर फोर सेक्टर वट ऑल आर द डिफरेंट थ्री जी पी पी प्रोपोगेशन मॉडल्स एंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ fading margins and propagation losses that we consider in our link budget and finally we'll compare the 5g link budget with the 4g link budget so this is the agenda of the chapter 2 all right so before we start let me start with the very basic thing to make you understand what exactly is a link budget so link budget in simple words is a mathematical calculation of considering all the gains and all the losses incurred in the network so this is a tabulated calculation of considering all type of gains and all all type of gains and all type of losses body loss foliage loss etc etc so the catch is all the gains are considered as positive all the losses are considered as negative so here i would call losses and margins so what is the difference between losses and margins losses are which are losses are certain factors which are certain right you put a different a type of antenna you already know its antenna gain there is no other antenna gain for that antenna that you are buying if you are using any device they will have their standard noise figure there is no change demodulation thresholds are going to be same there will be no change body losses that we consider are also same so they are certain factors right but in the transmission there could be some uncertain factors also like slow fading margin rain fading margin interference margins right so these are some things which you cannot be sure how much are they going to be so in that case we consider a rough value let's say an interference margin of 4 db so that that is considered as margin right because we know that there is going to be an interference in this region there is going to be a rain fading in this region so we already are considering that factor so what do we get by considering all the gains and all the losses and all the margins in the network so this is basically the main output so these are inputs right these are inputs which for the uh, link budget now why we are taking these inputs what output that we will get is mapl what is mapl mapl stands for maximum allowable path loss mapl maximum allowable path loss and with the maximum allowable path loss you calculate the cell radius and with the cell radius you calculate the cell area and with the cell area you calculate the number of sites required required to cover the area okay now let me tell you this using the uh, link budget let us say we got a cell radius of 200 meters for 5g and we are using a three sector site in order to you know cover the area so this is the formula of the cell area and this is the formula of intersite distance so if we put a value of the cell radius here 
using this formula you can get the cell area to be covered let us say the cell area of a three sector site is coming out to be as 50 meter square and we are asked to cover a, a overall area of a 1000 meter square right so how many sites how many three sector sites are required roughly so you can say the overall area to be covered is 1000 meter square and one site of a three sectors can cover an area of 50 meter square so that will be divided by 50 so overall 20 sites are required in order to cover the area so this is a main objective of a link budget that it will give you a rough figure of number of sites required to cover the area of number of sites required to cover the area right and this is a formula of getting a cell area in case of an omnidirectional uh, site and this is for the intersite distance of the omnidirectional site layout three sector i have already discussed and for a six sector site this is going to be the formula for calculating the cell area and the intersite distance in a nutshell this is what exactly a link budget means and this is independent on the technology whether you are considering a 4g technology the concept of link budget is going to be same if you are considering a 5g link budget the concept of link budget is going to be the same here let us see with the example so we start with the g0b g0b has got some power let's say 43 dbm so we are going to start with 43 dbm right then we encounter some cable loss 1.45 db so 1.5 db is subtracted from here so 43 minus 1.5 then we have an antenna gain 24 db so we'll add 24 there then we have some path loss then we have penetration loss so they are all negative foliage loss negative body loss negative shadow fading margin slow fading margin interference margin rain margin body loss everything here negative and we'll add all these things together and finally we got the mapl for downlink and mapl for uplink so for downlink gain of the ue minus the feeder loss minus the body loss and then you have the eirp effective isotropic radiated power so so once this is eirp basically how much is the effective power which goes out of the antenna this is the eirp for the downlink and here is the eirp of the uplink hmm. this uh, module has been taken from the 3gpp specifications 38.901 and 36.873 so 3gpp also have defined different types of propagation models and they are called as uma or macro urban suburban right that is what its scenario the uma is basically macro which is which is macro cells which are used in the urban suburban and the dense urban areas then we have rma which is macro for rural sites these are usually tall antennas with higher coverage area lower capacity etc then we have umis which are micro urban dense urban but smaller cells right 
so these are the propagation model and how we define dense urban urban and suburban by their building heights and the width of the streets in rural we have free area available a lot and for the purpose 3gpp have defined the propagation models itself right what is the meaning of propagation model it will tell you a rough figure how much if you are transmitting this as a power if the power transmitted is pt how much will be the power received considering the fact that there could be mountains considering the fact that there could be foliage considering the fact that there could be buildings a lot of them in the rf path so it is going to give you a rough figure so these are called as deterministic models deterministic model means the formula is fixed you understand you put the frequency in gigahertz you put their distance in meters you will exactly come to know how much is going to be the path loss because what is path loss power transmitted minus power received is nothing but path loss so if i transmitted this as a power if i am receiving this as a power so whatever i am getting lesser than the power transmitted that all will become the path loss you understand okay let me tell you one thing they are called as deterministic models right what do we understand by the term called deterministic model deterministic model means the formula is clear formula is fixed you need to simply give the inputs that means how much is your antenna power how much is your antenna how much is your antenna gain how much is your bts power etc and you will come to know how much will be the power received or in simple words what is going to be my path loss so i have everything fixed so these are called as deterministic model then there are some empirical models also what do we understand by empirical models empirical models are those which are or semi deterministic empirical or empirical models are wherein you don't know the formula you perform a test you know inputs you know outputs and then you try and find out what is going to be the formula and then in between we have semi deterministic which are generally used commercially right for both los and mlos they are the model which could be tuned and there could be possibility you can provide model tuning for semi deterministic model 